The kinematic equations, the big four, and how to use them. Here are your priming questions. We'll start with the equations themselves, and before I get to the equations, I want to talk about the variables and what they mean and what they can be. So we have a D, a V, a T, and an A. With the V, we have two different Vs. We have VF and V-naught. The VF can also just be a V by itself, and the V-naught can also be a VI. The V and VF mean final velocity. The VI or V-naught means initial velocity. The D is for displacement. The T is for time. And the A is for acceleration. We have four different equations that each relate different variables together. And depending on the problem that you're given and what you're asked to find will determine which one or more of these equations you will be using. So let's take a closer look at these equations. At first, it looks like you may have no idea which equation to use. And so what you'll want to do is when you're starting to work out these problems, you'll want to look for trends. And the trend in particular for these four equations is that they are each missing, and I should put this in quotes, they are missing a variable. And all that means is that that variable is not needed for that particular equation. So if we look at our d equals 1 half uh, vf plus v naught t, we can see that this is missing acceleration. So if we are given a problem and we are asked to relate the displacement, the velocities, and time, and we're not given the acceleration, we know to use this particular equation. If we look at the next one, vf is equal to v naught plus at, this one is missing displacement. And then for d equals v naught t plus 1 half at squared, you look at this, we don't have our final velocity. And for the last equation, vf squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad, we can see that we are not given time. And so this is going to be the easiest way to figure out which equation to use or which equations to use depending on what the problem asks you to find. And this is this missing variable, common misconception, is that this is what you're looking for. That is not correct. This is the one that is completely missing entirely from the problem. So the steps to working on a kinematics equation or a kinematics problem. The first thing is you need to read the entire problem. Do not skip this part. You need to read the entire problem so that you can figure out what variables are given to you and list them out. Once you list your variables out using what we just talked about. Identify, uh, identify the variable that we are looking for. So put a question mark with that. And figure out which variable is missing. Once you do that, the step number four is the one that will show you which equation to use. And once you know which equation to use, you can solve the problem. And for the more complicated problems, this might take more than one step which means you might be using more than one equation. As you gain in skill, this will make more sense to you as you get to the more difficult problems. So let's do a practice problem. A car is traveling at a speed of 70.0 kilometers per hour. It accelerates at a rate of 2.5 kilometers per hour squared for 43.5 kilometers. What is the final velocity of the car? Now, before we get started on this problem, I've chosen these, these variables and units for a specific reason. These units, what you'll notice, are not our base units. In this particular case, it is okay because in this particular case, all our displacements and values dependent on the displacement, the kilometers, are all the same. If any of these were different, if some of them were meters or megameters or micrometers or centimeters, something different, you would have to convert them all to be the same. Now, if they're all the same, then you're fine. In some cases, though, you may ask to, be f to find the velocity or something in its base unit. The default that you need to do is to convert everything to the base units. We don't have to for this problem, but if you're ever in doubt, you convert to the base units. So a car is traveling. We are given this speed, and we're not told the direction, so we can assume that it's going in the same direction the entire time, so this is equivalent to a velocity for us. And in this case, this is going to be our v naught, and that's going to be 70.0 kilometers per hour. It accelerates at a rate, so we know our acceleration is 2.5 
kilometers per hour squared. And we know our displacement of 43.5 kilometers. What is the final velocity of the car? So that's pretty clear. We are looking for a final velocity. And when we look at this list of variables, the next step is we after this listing our variables is to figure out what variable is completely missing from the equation. And in this particular case, we are missing our time. So if we go back to our prior list, so if we go back up, we're missing our time, which means we need to use vf squared equals v naught squared plus 2ad. So from here, we want to write out our equation. vf squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2ad. And now we simply plug in our values and solve for our unknown variable. We have vf squared is what we're looking for, so we'll leave that as vf squared is equal to v naught squared. So that's going to be 70 squared plus 2 times the acceleration, 2.5, times the displacement, which is 43.5. And now we simply work this out in our calculator. So we should get VF squared is equal to 5117.5. We take the square root of both sides. And we should get VF squared is equal to this should end up being 72 kilometers per hour. And that's with two significant figures. Our significant figures are determined by the 2.5 in this particular case. We have 3 and 3 and then 2. So our final answer must have 2. Let's do an, another practice problem. A ball undergoes uniform acceleration of 2.50 meters per second square, beginning at rest. What is the velocity of the ball 4.0 seconds later? At first glance, it looks like we don't have enough information for this particular problem. But let's go ahead and start listing out our variables and reading more carefully what we are given. So let's look at our values first that are given. We are told that we have an acceleration. So we have an A of 2.50 meters per second squared. And these are the base units, meters per second squared. We are told that we have a time of 4.0 seconds. Now, if we look at these two variables alone, we don't have enough to find our velocity. And in this particular case, we know we are looking for our final velocity. And we need one more variable in order to be able to help us figure this out. The variable that's given to us is that we are told that it is beginning at rest, which tells us that our initial velocity is 0 meters per second. And so now we have our acceleration, our time, we have our v naught, and we're looking for our vf. And when you look at this, we are missing our displacement. So you go back to your list of variables. If we're missing our displacement, that means the only equation that we can use is vf equals v naught plus at. So we write this out, vf is equal to v naught plus at. And we start plugging in our variables. So we have vf that we're looking for is equal to our v naught, which is 0, plus our acceleration times our time, and which tells us that our vf is equal to 10 meters per second. Now we have to be careful here because we need to write this with the correct number of significant digits. We have 3 and 2. So this needs to be written with 2. And if we use engineering notation, we can just write 10 dot. Or if you want to use uh, the scientific notation with E notation, we would do 1.0 E1 meters per second. Either of these would be acceptable. Now for part B for this problem, how far does the ball travel during that 4 second time interval? This is the second part of this particular problem. So in this case, we can use what we've already found, and we can use any of the equations because we have all of the necessary variables. In fact, we could use multiple equations to check our work. And so let's simply write out what we know. So we have an acceleration of 2.50 meters per second. We have a time of 4.0 seconds. We have an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. We have a final velocity of 10 meters per second. And we are looking for the displacement. So again, we have all of the variables that we need. So we can use any equations 
that we like. And we can choose one to check our work. Let's just use an equation that we haven't used yet. Let's use d is equal to 1 half a t squared plus v not t. And this is just one of the variables, uh, sorry, one of the equations that we can use. We could use the d equals 1 half times vf plus v not times t. We could use um, the vf squared equals v not squared plus 2ad. Any of these that have the d in them, we would be able to use at this point. And so, when we work this out, let me see. So we have d is equal to 1 half times 2.5 times 4 squared plus v naught, which is 0, times 4. And so when we work this out, we get d is equal to 20 meters. And again, we have two significant figures, so engineering notation, we could do 20 dot, or if we want to use E notation, 2.0 E1 meters. Attempt this problem, sorry, uh, work on this. This will be part of your homework. We're going to talk about these conceptual questions in class. And this is really talking about the difference between speed and velocity. So that's what you want to be thinking about. And then we'll, I also want you to work on this problem, and we'll talk about this in class and compare our answers in class. And here are your priming questions again.